love is um, something which I often find quite difficult and scary and frustrating, especially when there's a lot of it around. I have a tendency to withdraw from it or run away from it altogether. Um, the Mouthy Poets is a group which exudes an awful lot of love in a very outward way, um, particularly in the build-up towards these shows. Um, because of this tendency I have, that's occasionally difficult. In the rehearsal sessions we've had in this space building up to this show, I've left halfway through a couple of times um, because of that tendency I have to run away from love. So I thought I'd use this piece and this opportunity to speak um, to explore that tendency, and this is what I came up with. Dear love, whenever me and dad have those conversations, the ones where we stand in the kitchen beside the bread making machine that he never uses anymore, and he tries to talk about my ambition, and I try to talk about inexplicably aching testicles that probably aren't cancer, and we both skip past these boring bits like he used to when he read me The Hobbit in bed and we talk instead about Newcastle United's Premier League position or that squirrel that's been coming into the garden sometimes recently and then leaving again and then coming back. You tend to sit behind his eyeballs in a big swivel chair. You kick your legs and your perfect smile comes and goes with the regularity of a lighthouse as you spin, giggling to yourself. Dear love, I woke up in a small living room somewhere near Birmingham last month. I was surrounded by groggy friends that you had introduced me to. You sat on my chest as a massive Doberman all morning, drooling all over my face throughout Hobo with a shotgun, which ruined the entire movie for me. At Christmas, when my ten-month-old nephew climbed up the sofa using my sister's leg as a handrail to reach for the quality street tin in her lap. You were in his twitching muscles, teaching him something new with every movement. You peeked out at me from within his baby grow and winked. I could not meet your yellow gaze for long and had to go to my bedroom. Dear love, I heard of you in the news a while back. You had drowned your baby siblings in the bath because mum was always asleep and you just wanted them not to be dirty. You're like that. You do that kind of thing. And you tell me it's not deliberate, but I'm not convinced. There are mornings on which I cannot peel my scabby self from my own bedsheets, not despite the fact that, but because of the fact that I know so many people have so much of you for me. I heard you knock on my front door last week. I knew it was you because of the stench of sun-dried laundry and open drains. So I pretended to be asleep. So you fetched a ladder and clambered up onto the roof. And up there you turned yourself into this thick golden liquid and began to ooze through every crack in my bedroom ceiling. I have spent the last week scavenging the kitchen for pots and pans to fill up with your drips. And now I'm running out of such crockery. I've expended all the flower vases and empty jam jars and even that one pint glass I got from the Nottingham Beer Festival last summer. And it's even still now you are seeping your bloody sunshine through. You are all over my carpet now. You're getting caught between my toes and you're sticking them together. You're clogging up the locks and you won't let me leave until I've drunk up a good amount of your gooey snot love. This is what you want. You reached down and opened my bedroom window yesterday and promised me that full up with you, I would float to any pavement of my choosing. Love, I know you're right, but I will not let myself be another saucepan. You're reaching the neckline and I'm feeling like I might drown soon, but I will not empty myself for you. I will not catch you. I am not ready yet. 